Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today, today is February 7th, 2023. And we're gonna take this <laughs> large map that I have and we're gonna map out global conflicts. Okay, or hot zones and whatever else we want, just to get a feel for what's going on in the world, okay? Uh, because we've done a lot of current events, live streams and economics and whatnot, a lot of stuff. And all of it is based on this, right? All of it. Uh, the world we live in, right? Lark Bark. Hey, everyone. And hello, Chicho. Hello, Lark Bark. Hope you're doing well. Uh, apologies about the, the writing on this map. Uh, it's going to be, you know, blurry, not fully visible to you but we'll get a feel for it we just want to get a feel for everything okay uh dragons are we doing it chicho how you been uh it's been a while since i've been able to catch a stream glad to have you man you came in for a good one lions lions is here <laughs> ireland lark bark your states aren't you i think your states are you canada I, th I think your states i can't remember maybe we'll put on the uh, a uh, little note of where everybody's from uh, that are coming into the stream, right? Maybe we should do that right now. Where are you guys from? <laughs> Let's do it. And by the way, uh, I'll probably mention this again. Hey, J Pal 79, how are you doing? Tuesday stream. Now nah, we're talking. Hello, Chicho. <laughs> Hello, J P O W 79. What should we do this in? Color, color, green. Let's do this in green. I want to bought. Uh, I want to bought some of these guys these types of stickies okay and we have uh like these types of stickies little guys uh i even, I even got went and got some of this uh plaster stuff to put on the wall and i made little flags oh where's the little flag <laughs> like to stick things in i'll i'll tell you why i did this by the way uh she know how are you doing at chicho good afternoon good afternoon lions chicho is such a home you remembering me even to even though i'll disappear from the stream for <laughs> weeks at a time love you bro love you too man love you too i got a fondness for ireland man i got a fondness for ireland uh, one of my best friends uh brother is irish and i when i was traveling europe i bought a euro pass and uh, it was like a train pass back in the late 90s. Europe pass that I could go all, you know, many different countries, but the UK wouldn't accept it. But I really wanted to go Ireland, <laughs> right? So I was traveling with limited funds. I was there for two and a half months. I can't remember how long I was there for. Uh, let's say two months, right? So I went to France. I don't know where. No, no, I was in, um, I was in, uh, what do you call it? I was in Holland. I was in Holland. I was in, um, what do you call it? Uh, da, 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 Holland, uh, Amsterdam. I was in Amsterdam and I flew to Ireland and I went to Northern Ireland. I was there for five days. I flew over to UK to get to Ireland because I really wanted to get there. Right? <laughs> UK wouldn't accept my train pass, man. What the hell? <laughs> Mr. Brain Freeze. Hi, Chicho. My condolences to anyone Turkish or Sindeed. Indeed, indeed. No, very much, very much. And it's not uh, just those who are Turkish and Syrian that died. There were people from other nationalities there as well, right? Uh, but people in uh, Turkey and Syria, indeed. And 7.5, a 7.8 initial hit. I'm a geophysicist. It's a weird thing to say about earthquakes. Earthquakes and tornadoes and natural disasters. Not disasters, but natural events. Uh, geologic events intrigue me that's one of the reasons i went into geophysics right an earthquake especially there the, the energy being released on earthquakes is on effing believable right like the energy being released in an earthquake is phenomenal phenomenal right and it's a richter scale right it's uh logarithmic it's powers of 10 right how much more powerful is a two compared to a one 
10 times how much more powerful is a three compared to one a hundred times how much more powerful is a four compared to a one a thousand times right now just imagine san francisco back in whatever time got hit with a 6.5 or whatever it was pretty devastating for it. this was 7.8 over 10 times more powerful right huge huge and uh, by the way, just regarding the earthquake, because I've been following someone in the news, it got hit uh, from one understand, it got hit with a 7.8, right? It had a follow up of a 7.5, right? And, you know, some people are going down a rabbit hole unnecessarily to a certain degree. Well, you don't want to go down there, but everyone's going, oh, there's hundreds of earthquakes happening now. You know, there's been a five, a four, a four and a half, six and a half, blah, 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 blah. But that's what happens when you have a large earthquakes, there are hundreds of, uh, earthquakes that happened before after it right and if you with earthquakes i remember studying earthquake predictions and stuff if you're able to do things in real time and process the data and have it all available online usually before a major right there's a there's a peak there's a buildup, right there's pressures being released there's a lot of things that happen right uh so the hundreds of earthquakes after the 7.8 and 7.5 are normal and those are normal right uh, the reason I'm using the word normal is because uh, as a geophysicist I can honestly tell you uh, there's no doubt in my mind there are earthquake machines out there just like there's we can we can manipulate the weather right so there are interesting rabbit holes you can go down the whole thing right Allegot, I'm in Birmingham UK UK Huckleberry uh, hey Chicho, been a while. I uh, love to see you take take some job holidays. Indeed, bon matin, je uh, noir. Uh, platonic pluralists. Hello, hello. Welcome over, and we can get a couple of pints of Guinness. Indeed, or Kilkenny. <laughs> Amsterdam, best window shopping. Aha, uh -huh. it was dark, man. Amsterdam, it was dark. For the first five minutes, I was like, wow, wow, wow. And I was indulging, of course. And then after five minutes, I was like, oh, man, this is really dark. Uh, coffee shopping. I like the coffee shopping aspect of it. Like, love the coffee shopping aspect of it. Uh, Lions, I heard Turkey shifted three meters. That's a huge distance for a whole nation to show. It's huge. Seven point is gigantic. Uh, from what I remember... Uh, an earthquake of magnitude 11 or 12 will will crack the earth right <laughs> that's that's how serious we're talking about logarithmic right huckleberry i think natural disasters seem like they're getting more common i'm not sure there's a conspiracy behind it or anything like that but it's uh, definitely good concerning uh volcanic activities kicking up from more stuff solar flares are kicking up um or could we could be going out to a ice age what? i haven't followed it as in depthly i used to i used to do joe chicho uh isn't a devastating earthquake happening in los angeles just a matter of time before it sits on a fall oh for sure it's a matter of time the question is we're talking geologic time scale right me and you live on a human time scale right so where i am right now which is west coast of canada up here this is on the same fault line as a San Andreas fault line. Oh, sorry, I mean, not that, that's Mexico. The San Andreas fault line going through uh, California, going through uh, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco. San Andreas kicks up here to where I am. But the fault line, or a branch of it anyway, there's lots of fault lines here, right? Uh, the fault lines in West Coast of California are uh, closer, they're shallow, right? So the earthquakes that happen there, they're closer to the uh, to to population centers uh, because it's more densely populated, as well as closer to the Earth surface, right? The fault line that goes through off the coast of Vancouver Island, west coast of Canada, that's a deeper fault line, right? And it's a little bit off coast. So that earthquake, this earthquake here, that would be happening at some point, is not going to be as devastating as one that would happen in southern california if it was the same magnitude right because it's deeper where i am right and that matters as well uh very cool stuff very cool stuff 
Cheryl, how are you doing? Salutations, salutations. Uncharted Days, hey Chicho, been a long time since I caught a stream. Hope all is well. Indeed, indeed. Plutonic Power of Turkey is the possible place for the Biblic Great Flood. Possibly. Noah's Ark is on. Uh, Noah's Ark is uh, on Mount Ararat, right? Supposedly. Okay. That's where the the ship was found. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, fossilized, I believe. I think. Maybe not fossilized, but petrified, maybe. Uh, Mr. Robito, how are you doing? Checking in from the road. Love maps. Always good to know where you are and where you're going. Indeed, Lions. Uh, is a 12 magnitude earthquake probable um, in this current time? No, no. No, the highest we've had, I think, was a 9.5, maybe? It was Alaska. Uh, it was Alaska, and it happened off the coast here, and it shifted the land. I'm going by memory, gang, that I studied like 30 years ago, right? But for our, what I remember, it lifted parts of Alaska up 6 meters or 15 feet or 15 meters, something like that. So 6 meters or 15 meters or 15 you know metric versus imperial right so it lifted it up huge chunks of alaska created a gigantic tidal wave that went down here and went uh towards japan and stuff uh that was huge right so just imagine if you can do the mathematics here let's do the mathematics the one in turkey the one in turkey was 7.8 right so 7.8 right 7.8 earthquake in turkey okay the aftershock or the next big one was 7.5 right and there's like hundreds of earthquakes happening below here that are anywhere between six lower right down to 3.53 and lower as well right okay now if you want to know what the uh how much more powerful one earthquake is relative to another earthquake you do this right so forget this part right because we don't care about the little aftershocks they're still going to knock stuff down right they're going to knock down buildings because a lot of buildings that didn't go down initially with the 7.8 and 7.5 they're cracked right so they're going to go down with these guys six it'll take down buildings six and a half it'll take down buildings even five and a half when building structures have been compromised they'll take them down right especially in certain parts of the world right uh the earthquake earthquake proof buildings are not earthquake proof right but if you want to know the uh the difference right the how much more powerful a 7.8 is relative to 7.5 you put it to the base 10 and you do a division right so seven uh, sorry 10 to the power of 7.8 divided by 10 to the power 7.5 so here i'll punch this in from my end too you guys do it from your end too i'm a little slow on my computer calculator so here uh 10 to the power of 7.8 okay equals boing, it's huge divided by 10 to the power of 7.5 7 .5. oh because it's um, okay hold on i gotta do it like this so basically do, don't do it the way i did it I, i'm trying to think of a, uh what do you call it? doing it with uh as if it was a graphing calculator so you would do this when you're doing division of powers is 10 to the power of 7 i don't want to go into the rules of this but you subtract these right so you go 10.10 10 to the power 7.8 minus 7.5 which is equal to 10 to the power of 0 0.3 so all you got to punch in is 10 to the power of 0 0.3 to find out how much more powerful it is right so 10 to the power of 0 0.3 not in my physics teaching uh mindset right laying this stuff out uh to the power of point three okay so it ends up being twice as more powerful right so 7.8 so this ends up being basically 1.99 what was it nine one point nine nine something something 
eight something what was it five nine point nine point nine nine five you round it up to two decimal places even it's two point zero right so seven point eight you let's bring up a fresh one so ten to the power of seven point eight divided by ten to the power of seven point five is equal to 10 to the power of 0 0.3 and this is equal to 2. So two times more powerful was the next earthquake. Was the first the first earthquake was twice as powerful as the next one that hit in a couple of hours, right? Or whatever number of time. It was within a day or something, right? Now in Alaska, I believe, I believe we had 10 to the power of 9.6 9.4 i think let's 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 be on the safe side or average it out 9.5 happened in alaska okay might have been a 9.2 let's go 9.2 let's go 9.2 so in alaska we had an earthquake of 10 to the power of 9.2 okay extremely powerful divided by earthquake in turkey 10 to the power of 7.7.8 .7 so this is going to be oops that's supposed to be a 2 okay so this is going to be 10 to the power of 9.2 minus 7.8 okay so what is that subtraction is 92 92 minus 7.8 8 times 12 4 uh, 7 1 1 1.4 10 to the power of 1 whoops 1.4 okay punch down your calculator see what you get apologies for not reading the chat uh, I get distracted with numbers easy. <laughs> it's like, look, Chicho numbers. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Did a power of 1.4. 1. 1.4. Right? That's 25 times more powerful. Right? So, one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded happened early, early 19th century, early 1900s. Right? Was. In Alaska up here and that was 25 times more powerful than the earthquake that just happened in Turkey and Syria right 25 times more powerful right now the death toll in Turkey last I heard was around 6,000 that's gonna kick up to who knows like really uh, we don't know uh, we can do it we can do an estimation Right or guesstimation, uh, most likely the death toll is going to kick up into 20, 30,000. Right, that's what the odds are. There's 30,000 people missing. I don't know, like how fast people can get to them and stuff like this, but it's going to be well over 20,000. I'm pretty sure. Right, just imagine what the death toll would be if an earthquake hit that was 20. Five thousand, a uh, twenty-five times more powerful than what just hit there, right, Joe? So five thousand four hundred uh, death toll right now. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, Joe. Uh, oh, very interesting. Has there been an earthquake? Yeah, there was an earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Mister Brain Freeze. I think uh, they measured this earthquake even in Japan with magnitude 0.1.2. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, this would have been Richter scales would have been going off all over the world, right? As a geophysicist, you'd be. I I had a teacher in high school, grade 12, a geology teacher in high school, and earthquake prediction is a huge thing. Okay, uh, Joe. Another source says uh, 6,200. Yeah, that might have been one that I heard this morning. Um, but I'll tell you a story about earth scientists, geophysicists, and stuff like this. Earthquake prediction is a huge thing, right? Like, really, it's a huge thing. People want to know how to predict earthquakes because if you can predict earthquakes, you can save a lot of lives, right? Um, and it means you understand a lot more about the earth. I had a teacher in grade 12, geology teacher, and an earth science teacher in grade 11, geology teacher in grade 12. He heard there was a good prediction we were in Vancouver, right? There was a prediction that there was going to be an earthquake in Japan at a certain period. I, I can't remember when it was. It was the 70s, maybe, or early 80s. He, he heard about this prediction. And he flew to Japan. He flew to Japan because he heard there was going to be an earthquake and he wanted to be in a huge earthquake, right? He'd never been in a huge earthquake. He was aching for it, right? 
he stayed there i believe two weeks he told the story to us right a week or two weeks and the earthquake didn't happen right so he got on the plane and on his way to vancouver the earthquake hit right um and he kicked himself for getting on the plane and flying back but he, there's there isn't anything he could do i can't remember when this was and it was an earthquake if i were going by memory six something that it hit right elder god i thought the chile earthquake is still the most powerful earthquake in 1960 fortunately a low death toll yeah yeah i don't know i know the alaska one was one of the biggest ones i don't think it was the biggest one but one of the reasons the alaska one didn't have that huge of a death toll was because in early 1900s there weren't that many people living in alaska even right now there isn't that many people living in alaska so earthquake death toll and natural disaster death toll really depends on population density right huge 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 uh lines slightly off topic but for the scale of the disaster it's barely being covered in the news at least in ireland anyway ireland is really good with the news uh geopolitically turkey isn't on great terms with eu nato i wonder if uh mainstream media isn't showing it as much as a way of uh, uh, shunning them maybe maybe uh or was this uh part of the turkey will regret not allowing uh finland and sweden to join nato right it, if you want to go down the rabbit hole well, what is the reason we don't get earthquakes up in northern europe what is the difference between here and there uh tectonic activity tectonic plates like just imagine all this land mass all of this used to be all together in one lump called pangea i believe that's the word and it split it off to guanduana land or something else i can't remember and basically all of the plates like right here this is the mid-atlantic ridge right goes through right mid-atlantic ridge what this is is two plates that used to be together right so these guys used to be here okay and then a crack formed because of mantle so basically take this here let's assume this so let's assume we're here right so here's usa or north america let's say america right uh right Okay, I'm gonna get a new sheet. Boing. Writing like this is difficult. America. Okay. And here's Africa. Right? Okay. Africa. Right? So here's America, here's Africa. Right now they're like this, right? Okay. In the past they were like this. And what's happened is at the mid-atlantic ridge if you consider this the crust okay and then in the bottom here there's that's the crust here's the mantle mantle and we're drawing a line here so this is in the past right this is not included here right mantle there's convection currents going like this and the mantle is malleable right so when these guys were together this convection current was doing this and splitting the plates apart right so this is where that was happening so these guys slowly move away from each other and there's lots of different plates that are all over the place like every all of these ridges everything you see like everything together right now what happens here's a here, here's the reason why we get earthquake activity in uh, there's different types of earthquake activity you can get plates doing this uh, so so just imagine these lines being plate so top view top view top view here's one type of uh, earthquake you can have one plate going like this and another one going like this right so these two plates would do this 
if you live in an area where the plates are moving across from each other they go like this now the plates aren't looped right so they're not smoothing gently across each other right it's rough so the plates usually they're being pushed well they could be being pushed together right they're rough right so you push you push you push, you push oh, and then it does this that is your earthquake right the energy release there is unbelievable right let me do this another type of earthquake tectonic activity you can have is the ocean crust right is heavier than continental crust right so what i drew here okay consider this part the ocean crust and this is the continental crust right so continental crust is lighter than the oceanic crust rocks so what happens if you're floating something on top of something lighter when they meet right because another type of activity you can have is plates again top view coming towards each other right so if one plate the ocean is heavier than the continental right one thing that happens is when they meet so those are top view here's side view side view oops view side view for this one would be like this here's the continental plate here's the oceanic or oceanic crust it sinks right these are the trenches deepest parts of the ocean really right so what we have is this plate coming this way this plate it's not plate this plate coming this way uh, but this cr this part of the crust is oceanic this is continental so what what it does it does this right so Mm, let me do this so it's going the right way okay so this so this is the ocean coming down it goes down right and it's the same type of effect we're over here sorry my head i gotta balance it it's the same type of effect it's not smooth sailing just doo, 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 doo. it's not loop again it does this that is an earthquake right devastating devastating another type of uh plate activity you can have is two plates of the same density here right india Himala uh, Him uh, mount everest and stuff like this they meet and if they're the same density then whoop, they go up mountains right mountains you can get mountains as well when the oceanic is going down and crunches up the uh, continental and the continental make so super cool stuff uh, goes on right uh, super cool stuff goes on um, and we live on this planet on this amazing planet right amazing planet world conflict world conflict <laughs> gang i missed a lot of chat apologies i i don't know if i'm gonna go up check it out let me check it out uh shino name of the guy who flew to japan and missed the earthquake i can't give you the name i can't give you the name <laughs> I can't out the guy. Lieutenant Morris, Chicho, in your uh, uh, estimation, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, Mid Midriet uh, sounds uh, Elvin. Uh, in your estimation, how much do we humans know about the Earth build up and the possible different layers beneath us, and the mechanics of plate tectonics? We, we know a fair bit. We know a fair bit the only thing i would i wish i came across regarding the earth um because this wasn't taught to me when i was studying uh at university doing geophysics and geology or sciences and all this jazz right we were taught that uh petrocarbons right uh oil okay gas was a byproduct of organic matter right it was years later uh, early 2000s when i left geophysics right that i came across the i forget what the theory is called it's russian theory um russian scientists came up with it that they say oil is actually a byproduct of the mantle right it's mantle uh, coming up 
and it's renewable because it will always be there way more than what we need and uh, the whole theory of uh, oil being a byproduct of organic life i guess if you want to call it uh is bunk uh it's really existent in the mantle and it's deep and it percolates its way up i'm not half so sure if i believe it um i would have to look into it but i'm not as interested in that topic as other topics we only have so much time right in our lives Joe Chicho, I've just looked at a map of the tectonic plates and you can see that the earthquake happened right on the Eurasian and Arabian plate border. So it happened here, I believe, right? So Eurasian plate here and Arabic plate here. Is that what it is? Arabian plate there. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, Midriath. Uh, saying thank you for explaining hello hello kaf met fika what is what if the both plates are moving away from each other uh volcanoes it, this is this is two plates moving away from each other and we get there is volcanic activity all along here right mid-atlantic ridge right this is basically new earth being created right and here let's did we say we we're gonna map <laughs> Conflict zone. We talking geology. Awesome, awesome. So check this out. Check this out. Map view, side view. Here's map uh, top view. Oh, sorry, top view, top view, view, and side view or profiles. Let's call it side view. Side view. Okay. Here's Mid Atlantic Ridge. We're gonna draw the Mid Atlantic Ridge. Mid Atlantic Ridge is how we're going to draw this right america over here way over here africa way over there right so let's put those on here africa africa america and i say america because it's not just the us it's south america north america central america right so africa sorry you can't read that america plate here's the convection currents of the mantle and the crust is very thin right very very thin right like if you consider the earth right the earth crust is smoother than an apple crust okay so all these mountains everest and stuff you see if you really compare it do a comparison shrink it down to a size of an apple it's smoother than your typical apple that you pick up from the store right just keep that in mind that's how thin the crust is right so convection currents coming up here and what happens there is a split here right it's like this right so magma comes up and continues to push these things away from each other so new earth is being created here right new earth is coming up volcanic activity ground being created and doing a split right from the top if you let's say here's the ridge right here's the ridge let's say this is the volcanic activity new crust is being formed what's one of the one of the things uh what's one of the evidences that we have about new crust being formed is linked up with us knowing realizing that the magnetic field of the earth flips right poof poof from the north to the south right a magnetic field of the earth flipping is huge 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 gigantic enormous right because magnetic field of the earth protects us from solar radiation right from space right? it keeps everything in it's a shield right magnetic shield right aurora borealis and stuff like this right so what I, the way we know this is this when magma comes up right it's and when it's underground it's called magma and when it comes up top it's called lava right and it's liquid and it has ions in it right charges 
charged minerals right something that is in, that is charged when it's put on their magnetic um, field it lines up according to the magnetic field right so when the earth magnetic field let's say in north is pointing up boink, when north is pointing up the new magma the minerals if you look at them they line up this way the north that way and south this way we know that the earth's magnetic field flips is because these are called striations if you go over a certain amount of distance right and look at continue looking at the minerals all of a sudden the minerals in a certain strip along the first uh, oceanic crust line up in the other direction they're saying north is down what north is down what the f is going on and then you keep on going north is up and then north is down and then north is up right and then north is down whoop, whoop, whoop. goes like this so all along here we see the minerals in the crust of the ocean pointing in different directions right okay this is crazy cool and i learned about this i learned you know we learned about this in school and stuff like this but here's a story that the same teacher that i had that flew from vancouver to japan to be in an earthquake here's what he told us he was studying at university in the 1960s he said he was sitting in uh his class right he was sitting in his class at university and the professor came in and said okay everyone's got their textbooks he goes, he goes yeah everyone pulled out the he goes pull out your textbook he goes, okay pull out the textbook this is in the 1960s right and he goes okay go go to chapter whatever five and all the way to chapter seven and everyone went chapter five to chapter seven right and he goes tear them out they're like what he goes tear that those pages out tear them out everyone's like what what do you mean why tear them out this is this is what happened in the 1960s right so when when certain so-called scientists so certain people um this is by the way uh vitamins uh the, the thing in there certain people come and say rather rodriguez one thank you very much for the follow when certain people right uh low iq people some of them scientists come out and say the science is settled the science is never settled never settled right so this professor came in in 1960s to my teacher in the 1980s right 20 years later he was teaching this stuff came in and said tear those pages out and this is the reason right because during world war ii okay i believe it was american submarines when they were transversing the atlantic when they were going across the atlantic i'm pretty sure other countries did this as well they used to carry uh, uh sort of metal detectors magnetometers right in the submarines right and when they were trans when they were going across the ocean floor or a little bit above it they were measuring magnetism because they were looking for things right maybe other submarines right? <laughs> bad ones or good ones or allies or whatever so all of a sudden they were mapping out the atlantic going back and forward right because the war is here and submarines are here so americans were doing this a lot right a lot of submarines we 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 they were creating all this data right and what happens back then anyway uh there was a 25 year no releasing of information okay gag order on anything related to the war uh in the united states that's what the rules said right i'm going by memory again so look into all this stuff right so there was 25 years of silence everything top secret nothing being released right so 1960s right mid 1960s go back 25 years you're in 1940 right 1940 1945 right around that period all of a sudden all this data came available right so if you're an earth scientist geologist geophysicist geophysicist would have looked at this like drooling right 
They looked at all this data and went, oh my gosh, right? Make this friendly, child friendly. Oh my gosh, the Earth's magnetic field flips. Why is it flipping? Oh my gosh, all those people that said, hey, wow, look at the coincidence, the coincidences. Africa sort of fits nicely as a puzzle with America right i wonder what and then there's other places that sort of fit well together wow what coincidences right in the 1960s they found out oh wow there's something called the mid-atlantic shred plate tectonics came into existence the theory of it right and magnetic earth magnetic field flipping link that up with paleontology you get major extinction events when Earth's magnetic field flips, you understand earthquakes better. You, all of a sudden, the door was opened, right? Wow, we learned so much about the Earth just because, just because of the data that was released, right? That was collected during World War II by, let's say, the Allies, right? And once that information was released, our whole understanding of planet Earth completely shifted. Brilliant right brilliant right phenomenal phenomenal i'm all the way down to the bottom of the post gang i sort of went off on a rant but this is this is my love i love this stuff so felix how did you show how's life in my life i've almost finished recording a full song with one of my friends not to boast but i think it sounds actually share it with us felix Share it with us, put mouth. So we might get a Papa a Pangea again one day. We will, yeah. The odds are we will at some point when things merge together. Or Gondwana land, chunks, right? Chunks, Kafmed Fika. Such a good answer. Thank you, my pleasure. <laughs> you asked me a simple question, I went ballistic, right? And we did a little math, lines. Who got the rock, man? Uh, talking about earthquakes, <laughs> exactly. Plutonic fluids, Chicho. How catastrophic or harmless could a pole shift be? It, it would be catastrophic, not harmless, because it's not going to happen within a second. It's a shift because the Earth's magnetic field it has a wobble to it, it deviates from true north, right? So, Earth's magnetic field deviates from true north. Uh, true north right and some people say when the deviation becomes more and more all of a sudden it's just going to go woo, right but that woo, it's not within a second it might i don't know i forget it, it might take months for it to really do that shift or weeks or years to do that shift uh it'll be it'll be an extinction event for certain species because um like I you know I know very little about biology or plants and animals and stuff. I, I know I know some because I <laughs> I watch a lot of documentaries, David Nattenborough rugs, right? Um but birds and a lot of aquatic animals and stuff, um, they use the magnetic field to for migration paths and stuff like this. And um if the magnetic field shifts, you know, where are they gonna go? Right? they end up somewhere else and that could be devastating stream tighter earthquakes <laughs> maybe like pole shift as in north uh, and south pole switching magnetic fields yeah yeah or is it pole shift something else no pole shift is that the magnetic field flipping and the magnetic field is from the crust from the mantle of the earth right so you know sorry flat earth people but crust mantle would be like this uh, not mantle sorry the outer core right so here's the inner core the inner core solid right this is mantle this is outer core core right the outer core has is liquid right it moves around When you move charge, and this gets into physics, when you move charge, you create a magnetic field, right? So moving charge, <laughs> 990, 
<laughs> when you move charge, you create a magnetic field. And the outer core is full of ions, right? And there's charge moving, so it's create magnetic field. And Earth's magnetic field would be if that's north, wink, and that's south, boink. We're going wink, 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 wink. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Should we get into mapping world conflicts? That's a quick geology tectonic plate lesson. The flat earth magnetic field could be similar or different inside of a comparison. Could be. I haven't looked into the magnetic field of the stuff uh, for the flat earth series. I looked some stuff. And, uh, haven't convinced me enough to deep down uh, dig into it yet by the way gang as far as snacks goes we were able to get our hands some plump quince okay and quince is heavy fruit is super good as you know me jazz, i'd make jazz out of this but quince every now and then when it's ripe like this when it's bulky it has a very unique taste and i like and this will last me like a week that I'll keep on cutting off like chunks and eating it. It's on the dry side. With such a unique flavor. So good. Baby nights, yeah. I just read the last pole shift happened 780,000 years ago, and supposedly it happened 183 times in the last 83 million years. Sheesh, I always knew about that, but never really thought about uh, how it would affect us. It would, it would be huge. And that's remember, gang, we live on human time span, right? These are geologic events we're talking about. we're high frequency on a larger wave all right Linus, imagine if the theory of oil coming from the mantle is true the warmongering yanks will try and invade the earth's mantle <laughs> a lot of people would okay yang let's talk geopolitics okay let's talk geopolitics i pulled out this map that I've had for over 20 years. Okay, here's a link to doing. This is a video on BitChute and Rumble that uh, I, I put out uh, sharing my poster collection and this was in there, right? And I can't remember if I told the origin of this map, uh, why I ended up buying this map. I think the video, the segment would, that I show this is around the 30 minute mark or something, right? But I bought this map after the invasion of Afghanistan in 2011, 2012, and before the invasion of Iraq, okay, in 2003. So this map is over 20 years old, okay? And the reason I bought it is because um, I wanted to get a better understanding of global geopolitics. Even though I knew a fair bit, I was digging in, right? I, I was, because I could see things going in an extremely dark direction uh, especially after 9 11 and the patriot act the patriot act was a trigger for me that went okay this isn't going to end until uh people wake up to the reality of who rules over us right so before the invasion of iraq in 2003 i went and bought this map and I've been online for a long time. And at that time, I started digging into all uh, US military bases, where the United States had military bases. And you gotta remember, this was 20 years ago. There wasn't, YouTube came around in 2005. I, I was doing this in 2002, right? So you didn't have video sharing stuff, GIFs. 
the, I can't even remember how having gifts back then, right? Um, everything was text, you're reading, you're looking at static maps and stuff like this, and tables and stuff like this, right? So I compiled the data of where US military bases were, and I went and bought this map because I wanted to have a tangible uh, map, right? Something I could stand there and just look at, right? And I took my list and I put basically I had somewhere I was able to buy a whole bunch of little American flags on sticks like toothpicks like I don't know where I found this thing right I don't I have no idea where I found it so just imagine there were like American flags like this right with American flag on it right so I took these little putty things and like there is an, I'm pretty sure there's American military let's assume there's a military US military base there and I think there is one there right and I would take this flag and I would did this to it Boink. <laughs> right? and I had this map on my wall for a number of years right with all these American flags all over it and I looked at it and I went, wow. And these were American military bases that weren't on mainland USA, right? And I went, wow. And at the time, I think I found 180 military bases, US military bases, right? Conspiracy map, Elder God, he says. Uh, so I just appreciated what it was and what was going on because I wanted to really follow the news extremely well right so whenever there was a conflict war breaking out I looked where there was an American military base as the saying goes you know how dare Iran put their country in the middle of US military bases right like literally if you if you look at US military bases there is here's Iran there's US military bases surrounding Iran, right? Surrounding Iran. And remember that at the time, US was in Afghanistan and in Iraq and in Saudi Arabia, right? Right? A no brainer what's going on here, right? No brainer. So that gave me an extremely good visual. And that really led up to me starting to blog about geopolitics in 2005, 2006. Uh, so I had to share the information I was coming across and all, all the pieces I put together. Okay, that's where this map is from. And that's how I got the idea, maybe a good idea to do this for us to see what's what, right? Uh, lions, I love maps. That is a very beautiful, it's a nice map. I like it. Uh, see, uh, Plutonic Polaris seems nerdrotic. Would you like to see my map collection? <laughs> <laughs> Kafka phony. I remember YouTube coming out when I was a freshman in college. Ah, yeah, yeah. And then Google paid five billion dollars or four billion dollars for it. No smartphones. Beautiful time. No smartphones. No smartphones. Conspiracy map. Baby knife. So does U.S. have have uh, the most territories outside their state, uh, or is it U.K.? No, no, no. U.S. blows away any other country in terms of military bases around the world no one comes close i don't think you put all the military bases that every other country has outside of their territories i don't think don't quote me on this but if you add them all up i don't think they add up to what the united states has right or they're very compatible right joe chicho do you have any experience in uh cartography no but i've worked uh with people uh doing it uh, because of geophysics so we would uh, we would have to overlap our data right when we're doing geophysics or whatnot okay gang let's do uh conflict zones okay no brainer i got these guys i don't think these guys are going to show up as dark as i like them so ukraine let's use different colors we're going to use red right we're going to use red as a war zone like active war zone right Tosapien 15 uh, was just watching a stream about that in relation to the South China Sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South China Sea. So we'll use two two different colors. 
active well multiple different colors active war zone red okay active military activity ukraine no brainer is that coming out okay let's make it darker we're going to do this a twofold let's see i got these stickies as well so i'm going to put these under it okay to make it darker so let's put this under it is that better that's better okay active war zone right no yellow no yellow <laughs> we'll put orange for countries that are uh, like for example for example for example let's 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 decide what we're about to do right in western europe poland germany ministers in poland and germany and a couple of other Euro western european countries have come out and said they're at war with russia right they're at war with russia so maybe what we should do is highlight the countries that are at war right now what do you guys think should we or should we paint those as should we put orange for countries who are at war should we do orange Chicho, according to a map I just saw, literally half of countries in Africa are currently at war. No idea how many of those are active war zones. Like oh here, for example, Congo, Congo, war zone, right? But it's a war zone. And by the way, gang, uh, as Smedley Butler said, our wars are all wars are bankers' wars. And all wars are resource wars. So I'm adding the resource war part to it. Okay. But many people have said this. Okay. So all wars are bankers wars, Smedley Butler. And everyone knows resources is the driving force for war. Okay. Wait, what? Germany is officially at war? Uh, not, they haven't put out. The official statement saying they're officially at war but the german uh which minister pretty high level is green party green is warmongering psychopath right uh she came out i think she was the defense minister or finance no defense minister i think uh came out and said we're at war with russia right so maybe for those countries who have come out and stated that possibly they're at war with another country or actively at war we should paint those as orange. Should we do orange for them? Let's see if I have an orange. Oh, I do have an orange here. I need an orange. Uh, these guys as well. Come on. Let's bring out one of these guys. Orange. So I'm going to put an orange green party. Climate terrorists, indeed. like green yikes so i'm going to put an orange on germany let's see if orange is going to look any different than red here's orange oops come here and let's put it this way does that look any different oh yeah it does nice that comes out nice so germany has said one of the ministers anyway but we know they're a war right foreign minister a foreign minister said it and some of some of those are yeah 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 ethiopia i think the war has subsided but with uh where is it Boing. so ethiopia though i think is pretty much a war still right let's put ethiopia at war or war could be cooling down right a couple of other ones we know right yemen is at war with saudi arabia so we'll put those ones on there u.s denmark is pretty close to that orange yeah 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 u.s is u.s we're going to put orange there's no doubt u.s is at war with so we've got yemen okay i'm going to put red on here too 
We got Yemen. And we got Saudi Arabia. Okay. Myanmar, yeah. Myanmar is it at war or is it occupied? Is it is it at war? Who's Myanmar at war with? Okay, Saudi Arabia is at war. Uh, orange, orange. So uh, Poland, Poland most definitely, right? Oh, civil war. Hmm. Should we do a different color with civil? Poland. There was a couple of other Western European countries that said the same thing. It's a civil war, uh, isn't it? If it's a civil war, let's color it something else. What should we color it if it's a civil war? Yellow? Aldogan? <laughs> Yellow? I'm not Danish, no. We're just talking to someone else. It's a civil war. Actually, French helped them out a bit. Yeah, France as well. I think France should be orange as well. No doubt. Most of the, I mean, Latvia, all these countries here, for sure, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, they're yellow, they're orange. There's no doubt about that, right? Pretty sure. If I'm wrong on any of these, please let us know. Okay. Uh, civil war. Let's do yellow for civil war. You guys okay with that? Civil War Yellow, let's see how it comes out. Is Ethiopia a civil war? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, let's change Ethiopia. It's a civil war. Let's change it. Yeah, I agree. Let's change Ethiopia. Let's call it a civil war. Ethiopia, go, Ethiopia goes down. It's it's really a proxy war, right? It really is a proxy war. But let's call it a civil war. How's that yellow coming along? Not bad. Should we change the color to is the yellow okay? Is that dark enough? Civil wars are different. See, here's the kicker. The West is defining Syria as a civil war, but it's not a civil war. It's a war, right? There's no doubt Syria is full-blown war. You can call it a proxy war, but it's pre precursor to... Oops. Hey. Precursor to Ukraine. Exactly what they did in Ukraine. But Ukraine is maybe an order of magnitude more right no peace treaty joe no peace treaty was ever signed by north korea and south korea so they are still technically they are still technically at war um but should we put orange in there instead of hot war because they're not firing at each other right they're not firing at each other or should we call it a civil war because they're both koreans what do you guys want to do with korea uh, wait, sorry. What is the orange color? The orange color is countries that are at war. So if that's the case, Russia, it's not the war. Well, you could say the war is on its territory now because it it acquired. But Russia still hasn't declared war on Ukraine yet. Right? 2011 uh, Egyptian Revolution. That's uh, that was uh, CIA. Uh, uh, it's more than that. I don't want to categorize it that, but that was orange. That was the Arab Revolution, right? Arab Awakening. Yellow is good. Yellow is civil war. Yellow is civil war. I think good. Peace. Which countries aren't at war? Let's make those blue or green. Let's make them green. Which countries aren't at war? What countries aren't? Iceland. Iceland is not at war. Let's do green. Iceland. Iceland, as far as I know, is not at war. Iceland. 
Iceland, green. Iceland, green. Yay, orange. Ye orange. Involving who? Definitely civil war. Da, 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 da. Syria is mixed of international intervention, sparking civil war and further military. Yeah, it's it. Maybe at a point it might have been a civil war, but it it it's it's a full blown uh, proxy war, just like Ukraine. The revolution is necessary a war. Uh, quote Nagushka, what do you want to do with South Korea? Sorry, I can't answer <laughs> that due to Tia's terms of service. <laughs> Hilarious. Revolution is another key. Revolution. Somalia civil war, yeah. Somalia civil war? Okay, let's call it a civil war. Let's call it a civil war. Somalia civil war. So what's uh, what would we call uh, Myanmar? What are we going to call it? Hey, how come there's two of these guys? Orange at war, but not official at war. Yeah, orange at war, but not officially at war. Uh, red is war. Red is war. Orange is they're sending weapons like for example germany in one year went from sending helmets to ukraine to sending tanks to ukraine and talking about sending fighters to ukraine germany unofficially is a war with russia whoa shite switzerland switzerland orange if it was russia is a war i would say russia is at war yeah but i'm gonna put this on here should we put russia red should we change russia to red do you have a color for countries supporting wars like proxies yeah we're using those for orange so for example congo war here but what other uh countries are involved in this war i think we, we would put orange all around there no yeah so canada canada is a war or basically involved in it it could easily kick into a hot war for canada us we're gonna do red because it should be obvious at this point that then we're gonna, we're gonna have to change russia we're changing russia to russia is a war indeed let's do that as well or we do both russia red and us red what do you guys say i think both russia and us should be red because they're the main players in this And U.S. is at war in multiple places, right? So, I mean, shit, they're shooting down balloons in the U.S., right? Orange is indirect, uh, indirect war, proxy war, partly directed economic war, military, yeah. Uh, the Emerald Island. Where is the Emerald Islands? I don't know where that is. <laughs> awesome lines. <laughs> I go there. Do they have high speed internet? Yeah, this is a better answer than mine. What is it? Orange is uh, in drift war, in drift war, civil war, civil. I must say that is a very nice map. Also, thank you, Vandachi. Myanmar was started by coup. Okay, so Myanmar is civil war. So yellow yellow okay Oop. afghanistan 
Afghanistan now a civil war agreed hmm there is no war so far on Russian territory but Russia is war party with direct military not only indirect so another color again uh, here's the thing with plutonic polaris these Donbass Crimea this region and the other three provinces are now Russian territory according to the Russian Constitution so land wise it is at war you could say yeah elder god but they are being attacked Ukraine is attacking Russian territory so I think it's legit to say Russia is at war uh, agreed Caspian. Oh, okay, so Russia is directly at war in Ukraine, I see. Yeah. But then is Canada and US orange too? See, here's the thing with US. According to mainstream news, corporate propaganda, US is not directly at war with Russia, but we know they are. The coup from 2014, even pre that, to funding, training, to Biden, to Hunter, to uh, all of them. So I think if we're going to do put russia red we would have to put us red if we're going to put united states orange then russia needs to be orange as well it's up to you guys i feel russia is red but i don't know a defensive war is still a war a defensive war is still a war who wants to send soldiers not i most of the European Union. Yeah, most of the European Union. So what are the other countries that are so gung-ho to wage war with uh, with the United... Oh, England. Help. England. Doink. By all accounts, England should also be red, but they're not the main instigator, I guess. Uh, who else in... Uh, Europe. There's a couple other countries that said it. Availability. Red should only be used for countries officially at war. Russia isn't officially at war because it can't legally call up its entire reserve force. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Availability is putting up a question for us. In Ukraine, U US is deep orange. In other conflicts, red. Okay, so should we convert both Russia and U.S. to orange? There's nothing wrong with war being in U.K. Cactospian. If Russia wanted to, uh, to it could, it's war. If Russia wanted to, it could be war. Yeah, maybe nice. I love how U.S. participates and meddles in 90% of conflicts around the globe. U.K. is ignored. They already sent all their military equipment to Ukraine. Ireland isn't officially at war, and neither is any party. But the dissident new IRA claim they're at war with the UK, even though they've they've never taken any action politically. Around. Okay, so they're just blabbing. So we, I don't feel comfortable putting Ireland as yellow because I don't think it's 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 there, not on this level. But Lions, you live there if you want. Rock Rider, I hear this the first time. They want, they won't, they won't because then it would escalate it. Okay. Should we change Russia to orange and US to orange? If that's the case, I disagree. If Russia were at war, Ukraine would be gone by now. I agree. Okay, done deal. Let's switch it up. Boink. That's the other good point. If russia was at war i think it's going to happen this year to tell you the truth so we're going to change russia to orange and that means we have to change us to orange we're going to have to change us to orange
Mexico is in a civil. Mexico is northern Mexico, is uh, I would say in a civil war. Is it a civil war, cartel war? Oh no, it's not an orange. I want. I want yellow. More fairly. I don't understand that thing. Pa 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 pa. Ooh, am I missing some stuff? Shoot. School. Uh, a, a limited war up to now. A limited war up to now. It's not a direct offensive. I would argue the Russia is at open war with Ukraine. Lyons says. I, I here's the thing with regarding Russia and Ukraine. If Russia went all out, like they haven't even brought out the heavy guns yet. Like really. So Northern Mexico, civil war, I would say. And I would say lower Mexico, civil war still. Ah, I know there's serious issues with the government and Oaxaca and stuff. I go with the info war as red also. So you say also red for Russia. We can change it later on. Russia are like uh, Ivan Drago in round one of Crete fight. Wait till they start punching for real. Yeah. But the places where the war is could have a black flag uh, too. Yeah. I don't have any black colors though. <laughs> Russia is at war, but not at their own territory because it's not their own saying your car i now is now mine doesn't make it mine rocket rider says calf met fika sweden is orange i think because we are aiding ukraine yeah sweden orange i agree Doink. oh yeah i gotta add i gotta add lithuanian stuff too so we got three here as well and romania and Romania so we're gonna need a lot of orange so I'm gonna cut up some oranges here Western Western Europe is basically all of them are so Estonia what about Finland I would say Finland as well so colors just got here Viper says so orange is supporting war okay red is where war is happening okay yellow is civil war okay so far we got one green in iceland it's <laughs> it's not at war <laughs> okay so in western europe we're basically going to be putting an orange on all the countries that have sent military hardware or adding uh, or training ukrainian troops on their territory which includes Czech Republic as well, um, Slovakia, Serbia, civil war, Serbia, uh, Macedonia and stuff. Let's go. Uh, where's, para 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 para. Where's Romania? There's Romania. Almost lost Romania. Okay, let's put orange. 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 Then the one of the stupid Croatian, uh, not that Croatians are stupid, but one of the stupid MP in Croatia said they were also at war with Russia. We could have a blah 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 Sweden. Da, 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 da. Hello, hello Russian badger. How are you doing? Oh. But as the east eastern regions are now Russian territory, it is direct war on Russia. See, here's the thing: we're going between Russia being red and orange. So here, let's do this. Let's put both red and orange in Russia. We'll decide. So there's a little bit of debate going on there. Lies. There's still bomb threats here and there up north, but never anything serious. The most serious thing. Uh, they've done is planted a bomb in Waterloo Station in London. Wow, two years ago, and all it did was produce a puff of smoke like a bad machine gun. 
idiots can't even make a proper bomb like their forefathers yeah ah thank god nice thank you very much baby knights yellow civil war red current war orange country that indirectly participating in a war nice way of putting in a gang do not forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity something that we desperately desperately need in our societies right for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on sensor 2 and 100 percent australia is an orange right australia is an orange where julian assange is from right because they're directly uh involved in ukraine available oh solomon islands solomon islands civil war or what should we do solomon islands what should we do solomon islands oh yeah what about hot zones like for example oh yeah we're gonna do this so let's do civil war for korea's israel and palestine yeah 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 they're at war israel and palestine is war right and there's israel we need to add two two there yeah mexico we added uh, yellow civil war okay but the u.s has a huge part to play in it right fast and furious should we oh yeah we forgot armenia azerbaijan turkey that's a war availability let me put these guys up i want to read availability's comment uh azerbaijan and armenia and turkey is a war turkey is a war with multiple nations uh, definitely a war with the kurds they haven't signed a peace treaty with syria yet even though they pulled back i think turkey is a war Let's add these guys. Okay. Uh, availability, Chicho. Did you see how the Russians and Ukrainians had a draft treaty of 17 nego negotiations for a peace treaty? Suddenly, that gets in interrupted when boy yeah 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 boris johnson business now that the collective west has admitted it never intended to work for peace with the russia russia and that is uh that it was uh to buy time for the potential destruction of russia putin yeah 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 like nato wants to destroy russia they want russia nagushka in mexico cartels work with the government that's why the mask mandates happen there ah uh, thank you very much for the follow emmy salute honk honk hell of god ireland's at war, war with immigrants sal don't come here i got my food here i got some nuts here too almonds look at sal the chicken stuff out <laughs> I'm gonna have to put this guy here. Come here, you wanna see people? Here's Sal. I just woke up. You're a good cat. You are. You are. Look at him, he's just checking everything out. Say hi to people. Look, there you are. Look. You see yourself? There you go. Ooh. Yeah. Go on. Set up here. Go on, go on. Whoop. 
Let's see. I'm just gonna get caught up. Skated. Iskadola. Thank you very much for the follow. Was it Don Argument Ireland? Spain, Portugal, Green. Spain, Spain said they're not going to send the tanks, right? Is that true? Because initially they were going to send the tanks. Portugal, Green. Is that what we're doing? Where's my Green? There it is. Are we doing Portugal and Spain, Green? I'm okay with doing Green to them. Uh, but if Spain has sent military... I don't think Portugal has. Are we doing green for Spain and Portugal? Sorry if I'm behind the chat game. I had to take care of Sal getting into our business. Oh yeah, Libya. S Spy, how are you doing? Welcome to our last stream. Libya. Civil War. Oops, was that a green? Egg? No. Yellow. Mali too, I believe. Australia sent military harbor. Okay, good. So, what that makes Belarus? Oh, Belarus orange for sure. Hundred percent Belarus. Good point. Yeah. Belarus. Too bad that no didn't Western Europe didn't abide by the Minsk Agreement. All right. If we're not careful, all of that is going to be red this year right they offer to help russia in the way they can uh so much more so much red. like we're hair trigger away from all of this turning red keep that in mind keep that in mind uh, once you start mapping out the actual conflicts you really start to realize how close we're to a big scale conflict if things don't uh, de-escalate yeah availability huge lions what about uh, peacekeeping, Chico? Ireland, Ireland's main military routines are sending divisions to Lebanon and the Congo to keep the conflict somewhat contained. Actually, a couple of months ago, the first Irish soldier to die in 30 years died in Lebanon uh, from a Hezbollah attack. Really? I, my recommendation to any European countries that have any military in Africa, get the fuck out. Right? Any country that has any soldiers in anybody else's country should get the fuck out. That's my take, right? Africa doesn't need any European country. It's like France, fucking France. Sorry, gang, French, love you guys. But talk about imperialism. They sat there a few years ago. They installed their own puppet in Mali because france considers mali to be theirs right to be theirs right their excuse was oh we're sending troops there to keep the peace right that's that's been the excuse of western or european nations for we'll call the civil war in mali that's been the excuse of european nations for decades upon decades and going into the centuries that we're sending soldiers there to keep the peace really and that's what's going on so lebanon we need to add one more here lebanon is a civil war uh, so we're going to add orange for lebanon okay because lebanon is a civil war right now that's the way i look at it uh, unless you guys want to change it and make it a hot war so, I don't know, we're gonna just add it there. All right. Conflict zone. All right. 
Bibi Nashisho, yeah, in my country, Croatia, our president is on Russia's side and our prime minister is on Ukraine's side. It's a chaos between the two, is it? So what should we put Croatia as, right? What should we put Croatia as? Or should we leave it alone right now? Availability of Chicho. Uh, make sure when you're done with the map, you take an HD photo and put it in our Gilda server. Maybe pin it in the World War III folder, or maybe we should have a conflict forum specifically for World Conflict. Okay, I will. I'll take a picture. Uh, Iran. What are we going to do with Iran? Iran is orange, right? Very close to going hot, right? Iran is orange. Uh, remind me again, availability, <laughs> to do that. Okay. Afghanistan is now basically full on civil war, or we could say civil war. Okay. So Iran orange. Afghanistan civil war. I wouldn't say Pakistan is a civil war, not yet. I would have put Pakistan. Actually, Pakistan is hot with India, right? So what should we do with India and Pakistan? Oh, I forgot Korea's. Korea's were doing civil. It's a cold civil. Sri Lanka. Uh, is it calm now? Uh, Sri Lanka had an economic meltdown. It, I wouldn't call this a war, civil war. It has an economic meltdown. Availability. I think it could just go in international uh, conflict. Probably don't uh, need a word uh, conflict folder. Yeah, I think so. I think geopolitics, World War Three for sure. Rock Rider, Russia, Orange. Because of which reason? They are fighting or in Orange when it's not on their own property possibly here's the thing with russia the eastern ukraine and crimea western world doesn't recognize it as russia mm. a lot of people are neutral a lot of countries are neutral there are some countries who recognize it as russian i forget which ones not too many right so if that's the case then russia is not if we're looking at it from that lens russia is not fighting its own, on its own land Right. According to Russia, they're Russian, so it's Russian territory. So right now we got it as red and orange, right? Because it's either uh, yeah, it's basically what we have, what we do with the United States that's going to decide what color the U.S. Uh, the um, Russia should be. So really. U.S. should also be orange and red. Would that? Would you guys agree? Oh, Taiwan, Taiwan, Taiwan. What are we doing with Taiwan? China? Are we saying Taiwan civil war or orange? Orange is direct so sanctions included equals japan yeah japan for sure japan orange no no doubt japan is orange switzerland orange okay japan orange where are you japan japan orange switzerland dumbasses switzerland what about austria what about austria used up all the oranges from this thing good thing I got more we need more orange um, North and South Korea we've got to decide on North and South Korea again a little bit of red is full mobilization and complete 
an all-out war. So Russia would be orange then, right? Cheryl, <laughs> kitty cat. Oh, I must be way behind chat. I'm not the kitty cats. This is actually a great exercise for elementary school grades five and up. Sorry, right, right on. How you feeling, brother? Without the grown-up talk, right? Uh, Venezuela, civil war. Civil war, agreed. Brazil, civil war. Or very, very close to it. What are we going to call Brazil? Civil? Because it's pretty hot. This is one of the first times I'll be looking at the map and going, Colombia seems pretty quiet relative to the rest of the world. Right? A little bit, of, yeah. But they won't teach this in school. No. I'm in landscape mode so I can zoom. Nice. Spain should stay out like in World War II. Yeah. Well, they cut a deal. Uh, right? At the end. Rock right what uh, I think availability had it the right way is full mobilization would be full on war. Uh, so Russia hasn't full hasn't gone into full mobilization mode yet. Four D mode of stream. Russia at full scale war is mobilized as an entire reserve force. It's only partially mobilized. Yeah, I tend to agree with availability, right? Joe Chicho, what about the border clashes between Chinese and India troops? And what about Taiwan? Mm. Taiwan, yeah, we forgot to put uh, Taiwan. What, see, here's the thing. Should we say Taiwan, China, civil war? Or are we orange yet with the US getting involved? Should we call it civil war? China is at least civil war. China is at least civil war. Sal, what you doing? Okay, I'm gonna give you some. Here, let's do Taiwan and China, civil war. Okay, because Taiwan is building up, right? Hopefully that never goes hot. That goes hot, the whole map turns red or huge chunks of the map turn red. Right? After this sticky I put up, I'm going to go give Sal some liver because he just woke up. He wants some liver. You guys decide what we're going to do with the rest of it. Uh, I'm going to scroll down, go all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Oh, baby nuts. Okay, baby nuts. I'm going to allow this. For some reason, I zapped it. But Okay, I'm all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to read baby nice. Uh Chicho, as soon as our prime minister offers Zelensky to train his soldiers in our country and send them supplies that motherfucker put a target on our back and directly involved us into the war so you can put orange on croatia as well i think so too i think orange uh, croatia i'll come back and put orange on croatia let me go give sal some liver because he's just sitting here going where's my liver look at this kitty cat nice kitty cat yeah I know, I know. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me give you guys some liver and then let you guys out. Come
Let's do it. <laughs> Sal liver right. <laughs> He's a beast. <laughs> Sal eats his liver with some <laughs> flava beans and <laughs> nice chian chianti. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, orange, orange. Croatia, you're orange. Italy, too. Italy's orange as well. <laughs> Kebab Chicho, I received the comics in the mail. Nice. Awesome kebabs. I'm glad they got there good. Fantastic. Fantastic. I think everyone's got theirs. Except uh Padre Padre Padre, what are you? <laughs> uh Cyprus? What about Cyprus? Turkey's still occupying it. What about Cyprus? But you think NATO wants to get into fight Russia? For what reason? The included states are help a, a land that has been attacked. Uh, here's, a, here's the thing, Rock Rider. Uh, NATO didn't plan on getting into a direct war with Russia. They were hoping that the proxy war that they instigated in Ukraine was going to be, was going to be enough to destroy Russia's economy and have regime change in Russia so they could go they could take back Russia back to the time where it was under Boris Yeltsin in the 1990s where people had to sell their underwear in the streets thank you very much for the sub uh, Gojira Gojira that's like uh, the French metal band Gorija Gorija Godzilla is basically French right so they were trying to take over Russia why why did the U.S. corporations, Wall Street, the bankers, the neocons want Russia? Resources. Resources. Right? Resources. And once they had that, they could strangle China. Right? Did you hear about the cyber criminal who got away? Uh, they were asked, in Italy? In Italy? Yeah. What's up, Mia? Uh, Portugal was sent tanks to Ukraine until the end of March. Spain is planning to do the same thing. Okay. They're off green. They're involved. Yeah, I can't see Portugal and Spain not being involved. Uh, they will do exactly what they have. They are told to do by the EU. Because no EU country is an independent country the only one is uh, hung, uh, Bo, uh, Hungary so far right so por Portugal and Spain should be orange as well because they will do whatever the EU tells them to do right and in proxy uh, what the US tells them to do right I have to say this map is getting extremely depressing it is what it is right Doop. Spain Portugal I agree Portugal not as directly but if they're sending tanks that's it dictator of love that's a great dictator you're dictating love to everyone Portugal what else we got Africa we're gonna hit up Africa civil war in Sudan Civil war in Sudan. Yeah, yeah, Mongolia. You're right on. We got a, another, another, another green. Let's put green in Mongolia. Who knew? After decades upon, how long did the Mongolian Empire last? <laughs> Just destroying Europe, like in a harsh way. Mongolia. Green. Green. Mongolia is green. We can't see the green as well. Should we make the green blue so we can see it better? Let's see if blue is going to come out better. Should we make green blue so it comes out better? Come here. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's make green blue. Blue is peaceful too. We need a blue. Oh, I got blue here. Nice. I got blue here too. So we need two blues. Kazakhstan was a civil war uh, until Russia stepped in. Or it was, let's say, a proxy war. It wasn't really a civil war, it was a proxy war. Let's take down Iceland. Greenland, too. But Greenland's Denmark, so... Greenland should be orange as well, I guess. But we'll leave that alone. That's better, at least the blue stands out. We need some peace places. Uh, what would happen if NATO beat Russia and the US is now the only real boot player in the world? There is no more opposing sides. Uh, is that even possible? No, I don't think it's possible, baby knights. We had that in the 90s. US was the only, uh, it was a global hegemon, right? And it fucked over the world. And one of the reasons Russia is as powerful as it, as it is, is because of what happened in the 1990s in Russia, right? And NATO will not beat Russia. It, all of these countries, United States, Western countries, New Zealand too, the New Zealand sent tanks or any military stuff to Ukraine, all these countries cannot beat Russia. Why? Russia has the largest number of nuclear weapons in the world. They have the most powerful nuclear weapon in the world. If Russia gets even close to thinking that they are going to be conquered the world will burn okay i hope people understand that that's what the whole deterrence was about yeah. actually never mind i forgot about china and others yeah 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 leave mongolia alone i've invested much in their commodities nice no i thought that was my cat you know got a yak business going switzerland is a bit sleazy and has davos but it is uh relatively neutral no switzerland is uh switzerland is deep in right i have swedish friends and stuff like this and um you know there's a whole uh undertone to it where they say oh we're not involved in wars we just make weapons and give it to people and we finance wars so switzerland makes weapons right so they ship out like little country of switzerland and major banking center right availability when you put the map up in gilded maybe get someone to edit uh, in a map key yeah 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 we could i put a map key here to be able to do it but it's too small <laughs> i mean here what was it? uh yeah we need we need something here we do this and here's our map key might as well write it in now War. Can you guys even see that? War. No, you can't really see it. Orange is what what would we call orange with one word? Involved in war, that's too big. Uh what would we call it? One word. One more one word. What we call orange uh, what we call i'm scrolling oh wow i'm scrolling all the way down to the bottom and I, I saw one chicho here uh, joe chicho what about all of the stands kazakhstan uzbekistan tajikistan uh kurganistan um very close very close to civil wars some of them participating participating sure participating we'll call it uh, da -da 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 -da. participating sounds good participate participate in war support supporting war support 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 two piece i can't remember <laughs> that spelling don't 
support yeah you can't even see that you know what uh yellow civil war let's do civil war for yellow civil the yellow you'll be able to see i think civil war sort of peace green where's my green oh we did blue not green yeah that's true yeah i'm glad we did this peace peace rock rider you said russia should be orange because they are fighting on their own area uh no uh orange because orange is supporting war red is full mobilization war orange in the eyes of the west because they don't consider crimea uh crimea and eastern ukraine to be part of russia it would be red based on russia's perspective because it should be anyway because that's now Russian territory and they're waging war on their land, right? So let me read the rest of your comment or read the whole thing. You said Russia should be orange because they are fighting, they are fighting on their own uh, area, but they fight, uh, fought in the north of Ukraine and shooting rockets to Kiev. Uh, but as Ukraine got some Russian tanks, they should be orange because they supported the Ukraine. As, uh, but as Ukraine got some russian tanks as ukraine got some russian tanks they should be orange because they support here's the thing ukraine should also be orange as well because it is a civil war right it was western ukraine that started waging war on eastern ukrainians right western ukrainians started killing eastern U eastern ukraine russian speaking ukrainians so it was a civil war that was instigated by the coup western crew of ukraine right it just turned into a hot war so technically speaking ukraine should also have a yellow on it because it is also a civil war because the russian speaking ukrainians are i should flip no it should be like that are ukrainian right they're ukrainian so western ukrainians were killing russian-speaking ukrainians and russia stepped in for eight years they were trying to tell the west stop killing russian-speaking ukrainians because we will defend russian statement right we will defend russian russian-speaking peoples anywhere right Lions, Chicho. Actually, I just remembered Dublin Airport is occasionally used by the U.S. Air Force as a stopover for bringing surveillance and infrastructure aircraft to Ukraine, such as tankers. And, uh, is that technically participate? Um, has Ireland sent any military gear to Ukraine? Lions. If they have, I think they should be orange. It. Uh, you, uh, Ireland was a stopover for the Black Hawk. Uh, uh, black sites as well remember uh for afghanistan and iraq ireland and the irish got pissed and they shut that down right for the what do you call it the rendition flights right so ireland was in the mid 2000s ireland was huge came onto the news where oh ireland was one of the main stopovers for the renditioning of people around the world by the united states to send them to black sent black uh black centers right and then ireland shut them down so that's the thing right dictator of love i'm deeply involved in mongolian affairs the tugrig is the antipote of stability plus they change from uh pro china to pro russian governments every four years it seems like a little buffer puppet state yeah uh, yeah but is it a, is there a civil war there i don't think no one, i don't think people are really killing each other there rock right then russia isn't orange or do you mean uh 
in Mali or Syria? Mm, no, I don't mean in Mali and Syria. Syria is a full-blown war. Russia supporting it. So that's that's a good point. Russia could be orange based on Syria, right? And Iran based on Syria, right? You could say Iran is red as well. Dictator of love was was there last uh, time four months ago and you could feel the tension really i hope mongolia doesn't uh, blow sky high that'd be sad to see platonic pluralist where are we stability change between the current uh, allies russia and china maybe did sal go back to sleep no they're just here checking me out because they're not used to the setup that i have here they're like what's what's chicha doing hi it's <laughs> just circling me. That's, that was via availability i think when ukraine was at war with the donbass it was civil uh war but now it's turned into a war now that russia was involved yeah it's still half a huge chunk of the people were eastern ukrainians that were fighting against western ukraine right so it is still a fight for ukraine right oh we forgot about the koreas we didn't put the koreas in there this korea's got to be civil war or yeah i would say civil or should we make korea's orange gang we got to decide on korea the who started in Eastern Europe argument goes further back. Oh, where's Zara's comment? I'm just reading Zara's comment. Where was it? Oh, I lost her. I think that was Zara's comment. Shoot, I lost her comment, Zara. Was it Zara? Oh, yeah, it was. Zara, the who started it in Eastern Europe argument goes further back than we know, though, she showed. Indeed. However, one thing we do know, one thing we do know, okay, in the last 200 years, 200 years, Western Europe has tried to, or they have invaded Russia twice, okay, Napoleon, right, and Germany, right? So keep that in mind. Russia has reason to not trust western europe okay so they have invaded russia twice okay last time 80 years ago how many million russians died 30 million 40 million russians died that's pretty serious business also we know that in the last 100 years western europe has started two world wars or this region of Europe, Eastern Europe as well, not including Russia, they've started two world wars. So as far as I'm concerned, something needs to be done about these bankers and oligarchs and royalty who think they can send the world into global conflict, right? Are we going to allow them to start a third one? I say fuck them, right? dictator of love the dalai lama visits mongolia and china blocks the coal trade which leads to their currency to drop by 20 percent of value it'd be a good trade uh chicho uh joe chicho what about europe micro states that aren't part of the eu or nato uh monaco uh, monaco lechenistan malta andorra mm. It depends. Are they sending weapons? Are they are they doing it? We should Serbia too. We got to put the orange in Serbia. I would say Serbia yellow. Uh, would would I consider them to be peaceful? No, because when Europe like a good place to be, if you want to avoid war, uh, I would say no, because if this goes, they go as well. Vatican City is one of the fucking biggest funders of war there is right i've been to monaco and vatican city actually he wants more liberty this is definitely a troublemaker guy definitely a troublemaker guy 
Alliance Future. They they haven't, but they've sent financial aid and have no problem with the U.S. aircraft. Well, we've got an Irish guy saying Ireland should be orange. It is part of the EU, and when called, they will join the war. So is Ireland orange? Oops, that's not an orange. Where's my orange? There's my orange. Lions, your call. Boink. They are using it as a military base, so stopover. <laughs> See that my cats here, Chicho's cat meow. Cat friends across the globe, awesome. We should have a cat live stream. <laughs> we leave uh, mini states out, I would say. Regularly, they have their military protect protector state, indeed. And if they are bank hubs, they have a role in some way, too. Yeah, they do. Dictator for dictator of love. They are protesting these days in Mongolia. Obviously, not as lethal as in Kazakhstan. However, in Mongolia, at the Sak Sakbatar Square, power is concentrated in one kilometer radius. Easy to stage a coup d'état, really. Well, I hope it doesn't blow. Right, Kazakhstan. I don't think it should be a civil war. What were we doing with Korea's gang? But yeah, power parity, zero sum, okay. You should split orange, add a color, shooting rockets and bombing a foreign territory, <laughs> rocket rider says. Or partial mobilization isn't the same thing. The same like sending weapons or doing sanctions. or like See, here's the thing. Sanctions are war. So all those countries that have put sanctions, ninth, tenth sanctions on Russia, they're waging war on Russia. So technically speaking, all of these should be red. All of them, right? Yeah, oh my God, I think we're going over time. We did ge geology, <laughs> we did geology <laughs> for the first little bit. I would say Korea is cold war, cold civil war. Let's call it civil war then. Okay. We could use green as a cold civil war. Uh, but let's just do civil war. Because it's definitely not peace. It could blow sky high any time. Anything goes on with China, it's done. Right? Let's go yellow. Okay, what else we got here? Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, mm. Solomon Islands. What are we going to do in Solomon Islands? Yay for extra time. Nice. Are either NATO or Russia justified in their uh, expansion efforts? Russia is not doing an expansion effort. This is one thing we have. We, uh, I, I would say Russia stepped in to prevent genocide. There is no other way to look at this. Western Ukraine, after the coup in 2014, they turned to Eastern Ukrainians, okay, and said, no more speaking Russian, no more Russian being taught. It's equivalent. What Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine did, uh, what Western Ukraine did to uh, Eastern Ukraine is equivalent to this. Is Canada, okay, turning to Quebec and saying, no more speaking French, French will not be taught, okay, no more French signs, okay, and amassing Western Canada and the Atlantic, massing their troops along the Quebec border and bombing Montreal and Quebec. Okay, that's what Ukraine did here for eight effing years. Signed two treaties, minced agreements, saying they're not going to do it anymore. 
They're going to give partial autonomy to Western Ukraine and Crimea, okay? And they kept on doing it. And that's the equivalent. That's the analogy you can use. English-speaking Canada telling French-speaking Canada to go fuck itself and start burning French-speaking citizens, French-speaking Canadians alive in buildings because that's exactly what Eastern Ukrainians did in Odessa. They burned Russian-speaking Ukrainians alive in a building. Okay. Do you think France or even the United States, United States would be the best analogy if there was, well, there's French-speaking Americans here, but if all of the United States was French-speaking, okay, and English-speaking Canada did this to Quebec, would French-speaking United States be justified in going into Quebec, okay, and protecting the French-speaking Canadians from being genocided? Would Quebec be justified in holding a referendum and 90% of Quebec voting to join the United States? Should the world recognize that? Or should the world, Western world, send weapons to English-speaking Canadians to keep on killing French-speaking Canadians? That's really the analogy we have to use, okay? On that note, gang, I didn't do my intro today, so we're going to hold off on that, but I'm going to do this. So, oh, too bad. This would have been amazing to load on <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> sensor tube, but gang, should we, should we load this whole thing on sensor tube? What do you guys say? Should we load this whole thing to sensor tube? Let's call the stream. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't want to call the stream. We're having a good time. Russia saved Europe from Nazis. Free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. I'm going to scroll down. Let's see where we are. We decided we could continue this in another stream. We could continue this discussion. We need a close up camera uh, to enjoy your European. I know. I need a bigger, like a zoomed up version of this. Is it worth doing the states and the Pacific, Samoa, Fiji? We need to do. We need to do. Solomon Islands. We need to put something there. I'm gonna put yellow there for now. Okay. Because. <laughs> there, we're gonna put it there. Because something's brewing there. Okay. Should we call the stream gang? Should we call the stream? I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. Where are we at? Go to the hour. Where are we at? We got another 20 minutes? Lions. Load it and take the. <laughs> Load it all. Load it. Okay. So this was me about to say gang on Sensor 2. Because we're talking about certain things that Sensor 2 will not allow us to talk about. Well, or controversial on sensor two but i'm being recommended to load this whole thing on sensor two we're going to load it all on sensor two but if this thing's taken down if you're watching this full live stream will be bachute rumble and odyssey so if this is taken down i'll have to i'll make cut this out <laughs> those of you on sensor two if you're seeing this short one minute two minute video intro know this we tried loading the full stream on sensor two. It might have been taken down. I don't know if it will or not. Okay, it might give us a red flag. Who knows? Sensor tube is crazy, right? If you're watching this, I've pulled this little segment now to tell you that we just did on February 7th, 2023. We just went through world map and we still got some work to do. Mapping out conflict zones and stuff like this and talked a fair bit about different things okay and we did a little bit of geology and geophysics uh, at the beginning okay but the full live stream will be available on bitchute or rumble and odyssey links in the description of this video okay now that we got that segment let me take this down okay where are we at where are we at 
Pavan as how you doing? <laughs> Long time no see. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Uh, Rockrush, you think aid is uh, fighting in direct war? Aid is fighting in direct war. Yeah, in large part. The way the West is doing it, sending, emptying, empty, emptying their warehouses of tanks and weapons and stuff, sending it to Ukraine. Yeah, they're just using Ukrainian blood to wage a proxy war on Russia. What the fuck? Really? What the F? Right? Iraq. What are we going to call Iraq? Iraq officially is not at war anymore. But should we do it at orange? I think Iraq is pretty much the same level as Iran right now. More involved, of course. Let's do Iraq as orange. Because something's got to be there. Egypt civil war, is it? Uh, seriously, gang, what about the Congo? We've got to deal with the Congo. We've got to deal with this. Uh, Brazil is very close to a civil war. Very close. Panama, Costa Rica, Honduras. In the, this is the way the world is right now. This seems peaceful relative to that. Wow. Crazy. 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 Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, okay, Elder God. Elder God says, I'm sick of censor too. We need, we deserve to express our ideas indeed. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, I'm going to re read the rest of Rock uh, Rider's comment. Uh, you think aid is uh, fighting direct war, but if you think so, if you help a guy who is punched down by another guy, is the same light like the fighting of the other guy strong opinion where are the proofs of uh genocide genocide uh, ukraine basically eastern ukraine came out and told all russian speaking ukrainians leave you have to leave if you want to continue to speak russia russian is no longer accepted in ukraine you must leave that's genocide. Definition of genocide is ethnically cleansing a region of a certain ethnicity. That's like literally go to the UN. That's the definition of genocide. One of the definition of genocide. Ethnic cleansing is genocide. Okay. Strong opinion. Where the proof Russia giving free passport uh, to have many Russian people in a different country? Uh, it's not free passport. Crimea has historically been Russian. It was just given to Ukraine in 1954 by the USSR. So why the F are we accepting that Ukraine, Eastern Ukrainians have the right to tell Russian Russians in Crimea that have lived there for centuries that they should leave and not speak Russian or teach Russian in their schools or speak Russian because USSR under Stalin signed away this region to Ukraine. That that is the most ridiculous thing you could think of, right? Generex, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. Salut to Hong Kong. I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down. Um, where are we? Where are we? Oh my god, this chat is kicking me all over the place. Uh, Joe Chicho, I think the vast majority of African states have civil fighting and ins insurgencies that they're dealing with. So, should they all be orange? No, I don't think they should all be orange. Like Boko Haram in Nigeria, sure. Let's call that civil war. We might. Sh might like these are all resource wars, right? Nigeria, Boko Haram, right? Now here's the thing. Uh, Sierra Leone was peaceful in up to the mid 1990s. What happened in Sierra Leone in mid 1990s? They found diamonds. They found diamonds. So I know this because I looked into it back then. I was geophysicist 
at the time there was a documentary that was created in Canada that was a fantastic documentary Here, here's the story of Sierra Leone why it became a war zone civil war where people like the the dictatorship there the, the puppet regime that was put in they were cutting kids arms off so they wouldn't fight right a mining company in Vancouver Canada okay discovered diamonds in Sierra Leone in collaboration with a mining company in London in UK okay together they funded a mercenary organization that was owned by the mining company in the UK okay and they sent the mercenaries to Sierra Leone and they overthrew the government there and it was peaceful before this they overthrew the government there put a puppet in power and the first thing the puppet did was signed away 100 percent of the mineral rights to the mining company in the uk and vancouver canada i know this because i lived in vancouver canada i knew mining companies right civil war in sierra leone hundreds of thousands of people fucked over why because of diamonds why because of western governments western powers these people right wanting the resources out of sierra leone right that's our history by the way Tigre constructivist am I a constructivist read steer I don't know what constructivist is <laughs> I like construction or what's your uh, in real life uh, theory perspective no they did um, I don't so what's my real life I don't know I'm just a chicho uh, plutonic pluralist in part two we will uh, take all new colors and may look at the third world the countries which are not directly west russia yeah i think so maybe we'll continue this next week uh reed steer the entire south of the country mariupol uh kev all remain russian speaking don't gun tout misinformation is this me these are the russian speaking yeah but east the Ru ukrainian government after the coup came out and said no russian okay the state is no longer going to support russia it's like canada is a bilingual country right like in canada is english and french it's, it's been bilingual country from basically from the get-go right what would happen if canada came out the government came out and said we are no longer a bilingual country only english will be recognized by the state and only English will be taught in schools. Quebec would separate from Canada, and rightfully so. And rightfully so. Right? Rightfully so. Right. Nagushka. Kokium re uh, releases a lot of uh, euphoria, doesn't it? Uh, tell me who you're dealing with. <laughs> I'm reading some of random stuff. Random stuff. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Okay, I'm all the way down to the bottom. Uh, oh readster you deleted this discord yeah 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 f discord they did censorship we left we went to gilded right gang what should we do should we call it do we miss anything obvious we've missed a lot we've missed a lot right we've missed like haiti haiti is a civil war but it's not really a civil war it's the western world fucking with haiti france and the united states and canada right there's no ifs or buts there i know the history of haiti right or as best as i could at a haitian girlfriend okay so i looked into it wow what a shit show we created in haiti and in canada in canada you watch news oh we must help haiti motherfuckers we fucked up haiti okay part two we got to do part two india green india green india uh northern india not green northern india yellow southern india green right 
India Green Part Two now. Part Two now live says, "What wars are, are you uh, pinning?" Just saying. Uh, we got Ukraine war. We got major wars in in here. This is like a war zone. Turkey is a war with Syria. They might be signing a peace treaty. Turkey was a war with Armenia, helping Azerbaijan. Israel was a war basically. Orange as well, supporting Azerbaijan to wage war in Armenia. Armenia and Nagorno Karabakh. That's gonna flare up again, right? Balkans, Balkan. This place could be effing blow. This place tomorrow or next year or two years from now could all be red. All of it. Right? India, Pakistan, China, yeah, yeah. India will never warmonger. Ah, I don't know, Elder God. The India warmongering will basically be this the balkanization of India. Uh, right? But India is pushing its weight around big time, right? Big time. Ethics policy model. Ethiopia has a yellow flag. Yeah, civil, civil war to a certain degree, right? The situation in Armenia is byproduct of Turkish and Russian imperialism. The situation in, in Armenia is complicated on multiple fronts because they try to do a color revolution in armenia and they put a puppet that was basically trained in the united states in power right because they went oh the armenian leadership was corrupt sure every leadership is corrupt and they put that dumbass in power okay and one of the first things they did they brought brought in woke politics into armenia and they separated themselves from russia and started embracing the united states you tell me you tell me what type of moron what type of morons here will embrace this and demonize this when you're right effing there surrounded by turkey and azerbaijan that want to genocide you you got to be some fucking dumbasses dumbasses okay to go with this instead of keeping the protection you had from russia lowest iq sobs in the fucking world i know because i'm armenian i know those idiots okay i live in balklands real xenomorph says i live in balklands any suggestions on how to survive if it blows sky high leave if it blows up leave you're just another proxy in the war against russia take a look at what's happening in ukraine if this blows sky high it's going to be exactly like ukraine canada this is real canada is nice and summer <laughs> plutonic pros rebuild yugoslavia and get neutral yeah i think we've passed that road real xenomorph i actually have some family in canada that invited me to come over every year if it blows sky high i would real xenomorph well all party all chichos on the island tito vivalism tito vivalism Doink. okay gang let's call the stream let's call it fantastic super fun and we did geology and geophysics and we've got a lot more to do here we've got a lot more to do maybe we we'll start talking about taking a look at africa what's going on here civil war most likely in south america uh, coming soonish right we see we see we see and we didn't decide on new zealand is has new zealand sent weapons to ukraine rock rider you really think so quebec would try to punch the government and form rebel squads france would give them passports occupies new uh, brunswick and send rockets to Ottawa. You really think so? Here's the thing. If in Canada, by the way, there's a huge French-speaking population in New Brunswick. Huge. Huge. Right? If Canada came out and said French no longer recognized in Canada, Quebec would have the right to want to separate or want autonomy. If English-speaking Canada started bombing Quebec, said no, we're coming in with military force, yeah, Quebec should have the right to defend themselves. Quebecois should have the right to pick up guns and defend themselves against psychopaths, right? No doubt, no doubt, 
No doubt, no doubt. Right? Gang, let's call the stream. We're into two and a half hours. Fantastic. And we're going to load this onto Sensor 2. We'll see where it goes. Gang, if you want to know what this work is about, we'll continue this, by the way, probably next week. Okay. I'll keep this up and see when we're done with it. Maybe we start mapping up pipelines. Right. I put out an article, by the way. I put out, put out an article a while ago. Yeah. I'll give you guys the link since we're here right now. Uh, here's a link that, here's an article that I put out. When did I put this out? I don't even know when. 2000 and I don't know when I put this out here let's find it boing if you go to my site if you go to Iran boing uh, ba, 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 target is here. here I put this baby out in 2013 10 years ago right 10 years ago and I called this thing uh, target is still Iran clear-cutting the Middle East and the coming bloodbath mapping World War three and there's a lot of resources, links, maps, pipelines, and all this jazz in this article. I put a uh, put a lot of time and effort into this. Uh, boink. Okay, so you can take a look at that. Uh, this this article is basically what we're doing right now, but it was an article format that I put together in 2013. Okay, uh, we'll continue this discussion uh, next week, most likely. So gang, uh, thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed the stream. It was super fun. I, it was fun to do more, but I think two and a half hours is good. Um, we did a fair bit. And uh, thank you for the participation. Thank you, thank you for being here. Um, and we wouldn't be able to do this work without your support, gang. For those support we're getting on Patreon, on Substack, as well as on Twitch, it is in large part because of support we're getting on these two platforms, as well as some of the other platforms that we're able to do what it is that we're doing so if you do enjoy this work subscribe follow do whatever you need to do whichever platform you choose uh with your support we'll continue all this uh it's fun it's good to know what's going on uh and we can learn a lot right open up communications a lot of the governments in the world are shutting down communication right because war profits right we as human beings need to open up the communications right and talk and see what's really going on and on that note we do have a gilded server as well so you can definitely you're definitely welcome to join us in gilded talk about things uh share information debate uh, and see where the conversation takes us hopefully we can learn together gang uh we do announce these live streams 45 minutes half an hour before the live stream on Twitter, VK, Minds, Gab, Parlor, and uh, Gab, uh, Gab, Minds, Parlor, what's the other one? Uh, Gilded, Parlor, Getter, and on Getter. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Solar God. You're awesome. <laughs> so you're definitely uh, welcome to follow us on those platforms. Uh, some of them, sometimes some of those platforms are down. Uh, today, the announcement didn't go out on VK. Uh, it was down for my end anyway for live streams we don't have any visuals we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com uh, forward slash chicho as a podcast and those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify itunes and google play and again gang we're going to try to load this thing up on sensor to its entirety we'll see what happens hopefully nothing because we just shared information gave our opinions we'll see <laughs> we'll see where that goes uh but you can always find these full live streams on BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. And there's a handful of people supporting this work on SensorTube Membership Gang. Thank you very much for the support. I hope you're enjoying this content. And again, you're definitely welcome to join us on Gilded. Uh, aside from that, mods, 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 thank you for being here and having our backs. I hope, I hope uh, it's been worth it for you guys gang uh salute to the mods gang salute to the mods cheers gang and i'll uh keep this map up we'll return to it uh next week and just talk or take a look at more things that are going on in the world bye everyone <laughs>